So then the question is, um, what, what is actually going on with the hardware behind that front end B and C for um, a, a standard or I would say, you know, a mid range or, or high volume oscilloscope? Um, there's a lot of other things going on on our very high performance stuff. Um, I'm not really going to talk about that too much here. This is mainly just talking about the front end preamps and attenuators in something like a storm or um, a class of scopes that are lower than that, that don't have sampling architecture in that. Maybe we'll do a lunch and learn at some other point, um, talking about some of our higher performance stuff. Um, but basically, what you need is you've, you've got your front end B and C, and all of this hardware that's behind that, in front of the ADC and in front of the trigger system, has... Um, about five main functions. Um, the first one is to scale the input signal to the input range of this ADC. Um, the next one is to provide offset subtraction. If you had a little, if you had a waveform here that's maybe a small sine wave that's riding on several volts of offset, um, you wouldn't want to apply, and, and you really all you care about is that little sine wave. You wouldn't want to necessarily apply the, those DC voltages to the ADC because it has a limited input range capability. Um, and you're taking it all up with information in the DC that you don't really care about displaying or, or looking at. So in order to preserve that range here, you've got to subtract off that offset with uh, circuitry in the front end. And the other one is the uh, impedance conversion between the input and the ADC. And... Um, also providing different impedances depending on what you're measuring. So this particular scope, um, like I said, our mid-range line and our um, uh, high volume lines actually have integrated uh, two, two different impedances that you can select. One of them is 50 ohms. That's a more controlled impedance environment and that's typically used for making larger, uh, um, higher frequency measurements um, and lower noise measurements. The one meg ohm path is considered more of a general purpose that allows you to probe just about anything on the board and minimize the loading, given that, it, given that you're using the appropriate probe to do so. Because it basically presents one meg ohm to the, to the node you're trying to measure, and a lot of times that's a lot larger than, um, than the impedances of the, of the levels you're trying, or of the circuits you're trying to measure. So you don't get a lot of, of probe loading or resistive division between the, the, the impedance of the circuit you're trying to measure and the impedance, input impedance of the probe. So this is one meg ohm here. The probe that's used is actually a uh, 10, mo 10 meg ohm input impedance. So you actually have even less loading when you use the appropriate probe on the front end here. Um, so there's that impedance conversion. You take higher impedance or 50 ohm or higher impedance systems. You run it through amplification circuitry. And then you, um, the output of, of this circuitry then is a low enough impedance to drive the ADC which tends to be a fairly capacitive load. So you want to you have a low enough output impedance in here that the input capacitance here doesn't affect the bandwidth that you're trying to measure. Um, then there's another one, uh, provide hardware filter options that, you know, if you wanted to precondition the signal, I'll talk about this a little bit more with some slides, but if you wanted to maybe filter out noise or so forth, um, those are provided as well. Um, we also have the ability to, since we're digitizing, we can do a lot of filtering in software, actually quite a bit more filtering in software than we can with some limited hardware capability. And then there's also trigger filtering, just like there's filtering for what's going into the ADC, we might want to filter off un unwanted components of a signal so we don't generate triggers on those unwanted signals and we trigger on only really what we care about. All right. So before I talk about the conditioning to the ADC, there's just a couple ADC terms. Um, basically, ADC stands for an analog to digital converter. It takes an analog signal in and it puts out digital words. Um, the digital words are then used by all of our digital processing circuitry and everything else to do all the really neat things that we do on the display of some of these really high performance scopes now. Um, an, an ADD converter's job is to in instantaneously um, amp measure the amplitude of the analog signal and it does that at equally spaced, in, equally spaced points in time. And then it converts those into digital words um, where each one of those digital words represents a unique level on that waveform. So it basically quantitizes this continuous signal into a series of digital words. Um, this particular waveform might be representative of what you would see with a, a, a six bit um, ADC, where this, this, this word here is unique from that word. All these levels are basically represented by a unique word 
coming out of the ADC. And so the things that we care about in an ADC are its range. That's the largest input voltage the ADC can process. Most ADCs don't have the ability built into them to change that range or to amplify or attenuate. So that's one of the main functions that the front end circuitry has to do. So we can use up as much of the ADC range for the measurement we're trying to make. So uh, for instance, you know, if it's a if it's a 500 millivolt range, that basically says that any signal larger than 500 millivolts will, there's no codes that represent that. They'll be outside and it will clip at either its high or its low point. Um, the next one is the number of bits. This is the length in bits of the digital codes that the, that the output, um, that the ADC outputs. Um, number of codes, um, that's the number of codes that's ultimately the number of, of, of threshold levels that the ADC can, can do. And that's related basically just by this equation where M is the bit length and then N is the number of codes. So if we talk about an 8-bit ADC, it's got 256 unique codes to represent 256 unique levels um, of, the, of the analog signal coming in. And then there's this resolution or Q level. Um, that one is basically taking the input voltage range dividing it by the number of codes. Um, in this case, we say, say we had a 500 millivolt ADC, and then we had a, a 256 codes or an 8-bit ADC. Each Q level or each unique um, digital code basically represents a step in one, of 1.95 millivolts um, across that input signal. And then the other one that's really, really important is uh, the sample rate. That's, that represents the rate at which the ADC does these calculations. The higher the rate, the higher bandwidth of signal you can actually capture. So what's going on when we do the, when we do the volts per division? Basically, the, the first most important thing that the preamp does is it scales that input signal so we can use up all of that ADC range to get the highest resolution. Remember, we talked about the resolution being range divided by the number of codes. Um, so we want to get the highest resolution. We have to use up as much of the ADC range as possible. So, for instance, if you had large signals coming in to the BNC, something that's larger than the 500 millivolt full scale range, we have to scale that down so we don't overdrive the ADC. Um, you know, a typical 50 ohm input for, for like the storm line goes from 2 millivolts per division all the way up to 1 volt per division. There's eight divisions across the screen, so this signal can be as high as 8 volts peak to peak. Um, you know, that's a, a pretty large signal for a 500 millivolt full scale. So what we have is a stepped attenuator here. Now, attenuators typically aren't continuous. In other words, you have selections of maybe divide by 2, divide by 4, divide by 10, and in some cases maybe a little more than divide by 10. So you can't, just with an attenuator alone, take this signal and get it to 500 millivolts. So even when we have big signals, the preamp does play a part in ultimate scaling of the, the waveform to get to the ADC. So in this particular example, if we have a one and a half volt signal, um, the, the, maybe the most likely candidate would be um, picking a divide by four in the attenuator, if that's available. Um, that makes the signal 375 millivolts, but that's not really optimal for the 500 millivolts. So um, for this particular volts per division setting, you know, we might set the preamp gain to be 1.33 to take this signal then and drive it back up to 500 millivolts to drive the ADC to full scale. So for large signals, mostly you're depending on the attenuator to get it smaller, and then you're depending on some gain setting in the preamp to get it to full scale to the ADC. For small signals, um, something that's sub 500 millivolts, um, you really don't want the attenuator to play a part because all you're doing then is just reducing the signal even further. So this guy might be set to divide by nothing, um, in which case the signal passes directly into the preamp and then we depend on a lot of the gain in the preamp to get the signal back up to 500 millivolts. So for instance, like I said before, the, the, the front end might be a two, two millivolt per division um, finest resolution that would be 16 millivolts full scale that we have to get up to approximately 500 millivolts. That works out to a gain of about 30. So this guy has to provide a gain of 30 in that case, 
And it also has to provide the ability, if you, if you ever turn the volts per division setting, you'll see that you can go in really, really small increments. Um, so this basically, this guy has to provide, you know, a very fine resolution on gain. We call that continuously variable gain. And so one of the functions of the preamp is to have, it's got gain steps in it, but then it also has a, what we call a gain vernier that allows you to tune this gain to in, in very fine increments. Um, in, in a storm system, that gain is controlled with a 10-bit ADC, so that gives you, or a 10-bit DAC, so that gives you another 1,000 codes that you can move the gain from, say, in between, say, a gain of one to a gain of two. So you can get very high resolution um, to, to provide the optimum levels to drive the ADC to full scale.